Open RAN has been a very hot topic across the mobile networking industry for the past 12 to 24 months. But to what extent does this translate into the commercial availability of carrier grade technology and real world deployments? Well, to get some insights, I'm talking today to Colin Bryce, Senior Director of Product Line at Comscope. So Colin, great to talk to you again today. Thanks for joining us. Now, the industry has been discussing Open RAN for several years. Uh, do you think all the questions related to the technical feasibility of Open RAN have now been answered? Thank you, Ray. Pleasure to talk to you again. Um, I think largely, yes, they have. I mean, clearly the, the standards will continue to evolve and develop. But in terms of can we as an industry define an open uh, an open RAN uh, set of specifications? Can we develop the products that can deliver against those? I, I think those questions are, are, are really answered. I, this isn't really a new technology. I, I get a little bit frustrated sometimes with people talking about open RAN as a technology. It, it's a way of implementing a technology. Most of the aspects of Open RAN are, are really things that are happening in the industry anyway, the way we're developing radio solutions, uh, the way we're disaggregating and virtualizing aspects of the network. Those are things that, that will happen and are happening without Open RAN. Open RAN is a way of deploying those and creating a, a, a broader ecosystem of suppliers. As a telecoms industry, we, we've created standard protocols for, for years and we know how to do it. And, and the IT industry and parts of the telecom industry are already virtualizing uh, network functions. They're already disaggregating. So I, I think I think we can safely say that the the technological challenges of Open RAN re really are solvable and doable. The the, the the issues around deployment of Open RAN relate to other aspects. I think. So uh, given that, what, what do you think are the main constraints holding up full-scale open RAN deployments? Uh, and what can the industry do to mitigate these challenges? To be honest, I, I think the, the main constraints at the moment are really defining how the industry is going to deploy open RAN systems. So we talk sometimes about ecosystems. What does that mean? I, I don't think anybody now imagines that Open RAN is going to be deployed as a complete free for all where hundreds of different vendors can, can interconnect hundreds of different uh, solutions together and expect everything to work. I think we're seeing the development of a, a number of ecosystems and those will be groupings of companies that come together and provide their, their, their developed entities, their developed units into a system. That system will be tested and will be supported by perhaps a, another OEM, perhaps, perhaps a network operator, or perhaps a, an IT integrator. And, and that allows the, the regression testing, the integration, the support to be put in place for that ecosystem. And, and we would expect a number of different ecosystems to develop, but exactly how those are going to develop and, and how companies like Comscope can, can become a part of those ecosystems and, and deliver into those ecosystems. I think that's the thing we've got to really understand as, as, as we go forward. I think also um, we need to balance the, the, the development of the protocols and the standardization with the ability to innovate. So we have to make sure that, that by having an open system and by limiting certain aspects of the interconnectivity, we, we don't limit developments. And we've seen some instances, for example, in, in Comscope's small cell solution, we have some very unique features, which, which perhaps are going to be a little bit uh, challenging to put on the current version of, of the open standards. So we need to make sure that the processes are in place to allow those innovations to still be deployed in the networks. Okay, that's interesting. And so this is a good time now to talk uh, a little bit more about Comscope specifically. Uh, on which particular areas of Open RAN does Comscope focus and how are things progressing for you? So Comscope is, is primarily a, a, an infrastructure provider. Um, we have a, a long record of uh, being, being partners with mobile operators and mobile OEMs. And, and really we, we deploy two types of solution into the market. One is based more towards the, the microcellular 
networks and and we provide all the ancillary uh features around the the, the a micro cell site and how you deploy a radio on a micro cell site and and those types of aspects of deploying a network are, aren't going to go away with open ran so we are very much focused on ensuring that all the lessons learned and all the capabilities to to deploy and build a cell site are available to the open ran uh, ecosystem uh, as well as they have been historically to the to the oems the second area we're involved in is, is really around what I would call specialized coverage solutions. And, and by that, I mean things like uh, distributed antenna systems, small cell solutions that, that might be aimed at the enterprise market or neutral host or indeed private networks. And, and we're working very hard to ensure that those solutions are, are, are upgraded and, and developed so that they can form part of a an open RAN solution in the same way they historically have done with uh, with OEM type uh, deployed networks. So uh, given that Comscope is primarily a radio vendor, are there any specific challenges related to the radio element of an open RAN architecture? I think specific challenges are, are, are perhaps uh, not unique in some ways to open RAN. They're, they're the same sets of challenges that uh, that, that we face today. Um, but if we think about it, the, the current OEM solutions that are being deployed are, are, you know, are, are very mature. And indeed, if we think of 5G massive MIMO, by, by the time Open RAN is, is really deploying, uh, perhaps some of the OEMs will be on their second or maybe even their third spin of development cycles of those massive MIMO solutions. So Open RAN really has to, has to almost jump the first generation development and be ready to compete in that second or third generation. Um, and and the, the issues are all the ones we face, size, weight, uh, wind, wind loading on a site, everything that, that is needed to deploy a site. And, and now more and more we're talking about power efficiency on sites as well. Um, I think one of the senior uh, directors and senior managers at, at, at Vodafone made a statement recently that 5G is the, is the biggest civil engineering project that the company have had since 2G was deployed. And what, what I think, the, I think it was Andrea Rona, the, the head of networks in the UK who said this. And, and what I think he means is the fact that a larger proportion of the CapEx spend for 5G has, has had to be spent on mechanical and structural aspects of the cell sites to allow 5G to be deployed than was the case in 3G and 4G. So I think anything that the industry can do to mitigate that is of great benefit. Finally, I would say the, 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 the challenge is, is really to be able to produce open run radio units at, 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 a, at a good cost and, and efficiency. And that really means uh, much more integration onto the silicon. So the, the SOCs, the RF SOCs um, need to be developed in, in, in a way that can be done uh, via ASICs by the OEMs. And I think that means trying to get a, a relatively standard reference design for the radio and the radio solution. And we're, we're working with industry partners on that, and particularly what we call a split architecture, which allows all the analog elements of an RU, the, the, the filters, the, the, the uh, antenna arrays, the calibration networks, to be totally separated from the, the digital and PA aspects of the radio. And I think this is going to allow you know, very efficient design and development of radio units and, and a high degree of flexibility in, in the configuration of these radio units as, as, as we go to market. So I think th th those are the key areas that, that Comscope's focusing on today. Okay, so all interesting areas of development and things are obviously moving on at uh, quite a fast pace. Um, do you have any thoughts at all on, on the timing of widespread commercial deployments of Open RAN? Well, I, I, I have to be careful here because I'm sure there are a lot of people uh, listening in from operators and from other, uh, other manufacturers and developers who have their own views on this. Um, our view from talking to, to operators and partners in the industry is that we, we probably haven't really seen commercial deployments to, to, to a, a, any scale in, in 2021. We have seen some initial 
toe in the water, I would call them almost more glorified large scale field trials today. So we think next year, 2022, we're going to see the start of, of real commercial deployment of Open RAN. It, it will still probably be primarily focused on legacy technology, by which I mean up to 44 hour radios focused on, on 4G mainly, and perhaps deployed more into rural suburban areas. And it'll probably be another 12 to 18 months, maybe up to two years before we really start to see Open RAN deployed as, as, as a commercial 5G with, with massive MIMO, with beamforming. Um, and and that, that's a challenge because it, it means that a lot of, we'll have to think about how Open RAN can work seamlessly with those types of networks that are already deployed and, and, and integrate into, into the 5G networks that are, that are going to already be serving customers at that point. But that, that's, that's where we, we feel the timing is at the moment. Although I'd, I'd, I'd welcome uh, you know, any, any viewers of this who, who, who uh, disagree with that to, to get in touch and, and give us their views because we'd, we'd love to, to get a really good understanding of, of, of how this is going to evolve and when. Well, I'm, I'm sure you'd get a pretty broad spectrum of yeah, answers sure, yeah. to that one. So I'm, <laughs> I'm sure things will come a little clearer over the next year or two. Um, but if we fast forward now sort of at five or six years, um, uh, you know, looking back from that perspective, in, in which areas of the radio access network do you think Open RAN will have the greatest impact? Interestingly, I, I think it's probably the area that isn't my area of expertise, if you like. Um, I, I think Open RAN uh, will be deployed on the radio side. Whether it will create huge amounts of innovation that wouldn't have happened through the through the OEM channels, I, I, I'm I'm not so clear. But the one area that I am quite excited about is is really the the, the RAN intelligent control of the RIC. Um, that that. I think is going to offer great opportunities for innovation. Um, it, it, it allows effectively self-optimized networks that we've talked about for years, but, but I think th this is actually going to allow those to develop much more quickly because it, it, it allows independent companies to develop X apps and R apps. So applications that can use machine learning, uh, AI to, to really optimize and, and control and manage networks in a way that we've never really been able to do. And, and that might ultimately affect the type of uh, products that we supply if we need to put sensors and actuators on those to, to deliver those services that the, the intelligence that, that's being uh, executed in, in the RIC uh, can, can manage the network in a different way. So, so I, think, I think that if, is going to be the most exciting area and the one that perhaps changes the way we think about and the way we operate and manage networks in the future. And I, I really look forward to seeing how that develops. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a, a really interesting and, of course, vitally important part of the whole development of Open RAN. Well, Colin, great to talk with you today. Thanks for your insights and thanks very much for joining us again. Thank you, Reid. Pleasure. Yeah.